Hello, I have the pleasure of sitting next to two veteran science faculty members, Dr. Victor Stanionis and Dr. Frank Fazio. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Before we begin, I'm just curious as to how long you both have been teaching at Iona. Well, I started teaching at Iona in 1961. Mm -hmm. I was a student at Iona from 56 through 60. Wow. And I've been here ever since. So like 53 years? Finishing my 53rd year. Wow. Right. And you? I, uh, I was a student here at Iona, 1961 to 65, mm -hmm. and then came back mm -hmm. uh, full-time, I guess instructor at the time, uh -huh. uh, in 1968, and then finished up my Ph.D. that first year. So I've, I've been here uh, at the end of this semester will be 46 years. So you guys know all the ins and outs of this place by now. <laughs> well. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I believe, um, uh, Dr. Stanionis, you are one of the authors of my science and technology literacy textbook. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Right. So you, with a couple of uh, faculty members, wrote that? Correct. There are a number of books that uh, we collaborated on mm -hmm. over the years with the science faculty. So uh, take us through the history of this historic building we're sitting in now, Cornelia Hall. Well, as you probably know, Cornelia Hall was the first building that the college occupied. And uh, I think on Iona's webpage, it states that this building was seized in a friendly manner <laughs> from Iona Prep. It was built as the science building for Iona Prep, and before it could open as a science building for Iona Prep, it became the first building of Iona College. The brothers then announced that they were establishing a college on the same campus uh -huh. as Cornelia Hall. I think when, when I arrived here as a uh, as a student, uh, about when Iona Prep moved off campus. They were here all those years in between in what is now the business school, mm -hmm. and then moved off campus. Yeah, Cornelia Hall did not have these wings on it mm -hmm. when I came. When I came as a student, this, that was the first year that the 12 classrooms were added to the building, mm -hmm. six on it on either side. Now, in the near future, this building is going to go through um, some changes that, is that are laid out in the campus master plan. Can you highlight some of those changes and the significance of them? We were contacted, I was contacted, as were many of the other faculty in the science areas and the biology, chemistry, and physics departments to look at a design, our needs, a design, how would we fulfill those needs uh, for the near future and going forward. Uh, mm -hmm. for many years mm -hmm. to come. Uh, I was asked to be on a strategic, one of the strategic planning committees that looked at space utilization on the campus and our, uh, our main thrust was looking at the buildings and mm -hmm. uh, science building and the business school building. Mm -hmm. So the way this looks right now, having worked very closely with all of the science faculty and the science mm -hmm. chairs for each department's needs. Uh, we're looking at constructing a structure out back of what the current building is in the parking Sorry. lot. Mm -hmm. The Columbus parking lot? In this, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Three-story building, much like this, mm -hmm. which will be connected by enclosed walkways. Okay. Uh, this building will have uh, lounges for the students. It will have all of the science offices, research labs, teaching labs, uh, hopefully a greenhouse on, on the roof of the building or partial mm -hmm. part of the roof, depending on what the architects mm -hmm. think would be feasible when we get to that point. We're mm -hmm. not at that point yet. We renovated this back in uh, this building in 1996. We did our first renovation, mm -hmm. uh, probably half of the labs. In 1999, in July of 99, uh, we did a second renovation. And one of the major things we did is we took all the classrooms off the top floor and made them into all science teaching and research labs. Okay. Uh, and, and that was a, a, a big step going forward in our, the education of our students. How will the new facilities, the proposed new facilities, um, enhance the, the program, the science program, and the benefit the science majors? 
Well, the labs that we currently have in this building really are, are not the size and, and structure that we, we need for uh, college level science labs. Mm -hmm. So the new building will be designed specifically and obviously to handle college level science labs, teaching labs on one case, research labs uh, on the other. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we're looking at developing the curriculum to the point where all of our students will do research with faculty members and the labs have to be uh, one modernized. One-on-one one -on -one research? One-on-one -on -one okay. research. Mm -hmm. And the labs have to be able to accommodate that. They have to have the equipment, they have to have the size, they have to have all of the modern safety facilities. And uh, that's the goal of, of what we're aiming at in that new mm -hmm. building. Will the new building or the new center include uh, computer science? So right now, on paper, that's, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not that will actually work out that way in the end, I'm not sure. We're not sure of anything. Once you sit down, mm -hmm. you know, once we get a final go-ahead and we sit down with the architects, you know, then all of that will have to be, you know, worked out uh, into the building of the size that we can accommodate, mm -hmm. you know, financially and in the space that we have allotted uh, out here. I'd like to comment on something that we were talking about before, the research labs. Yeah. Uh, there have been studies that uh, we've been uh, privileged to see that show that the most successful colleges that produce mm -hmm. science students are the ones in which faculty and students collaborate on their research, one-on-one. Mm -hmm. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And these are not the large engineering schools or universities. No. They turn out to be the liberal arts colleges, for the mm -hmm. most part, that produce the, the most science students who go on to PhDs. Mm -hmm. So what is your, both of your, where do you see the science program in the future? What are your visions? Well, I, I, I think as Victor just pointed out, mm -hmm. uh, what, what I, see for Iona College, what I would like to see for Iona College, mm -hmm. you know, uh, having it in my blood, yes. so to speak, uh, from the time I was an 18-year-old boy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, is that this would be one of the colleges that fit in with that elite group of small liberal arts colleges where uh, they have a very, very high percentage of science majors mm -hmm. uh, and produce among the largest numbers of PhDs in all of the sciences. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order to do that, you have to have a faculty mm -hmm. that can uh, be willing and able to do research with undergraduate students on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Mm -hmm. In order to attract those faculty, to hire faculty of that caliber, you have to have a facility that they would then be able to mm -hmm carry out their research. Mm -hmm. And this building right now would not accommodate that uh, for any number of students mm -hmm. above and beyond what we currently have. Mm -hmm. So to get increase the size of our faculty, the size of our students, the quality of our programs, mm -hmm. to stay up with all of the developments that are going on you know, at warp speed, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, this facility cannot handle that anymore. Mm -hmm. We have to improve and enlarge. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to build another one, to occupy that, come back in here, renovate this, and then have, you know, mm -hmm. the best of both worlds, so to speak. Mm -hmm. what, what I would like to see in this college uh, down the road is the quality academic programs mm -hmm. that would make it among the, the elite small liberal arts colleges mm -hmm. in their science offerings. That's not to say that we haven't produced outstanding students mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess one of my most outstanding students is the head of our physics department, mm -hmm. Brother Novak. Oh, yeah. But there are others out there that uh, have gone on and are teaching at Ivy League institutions. Mm -hmm. One of our students in physics was the head of the Fermi Lab in Chicago mm -hmm. and made deputy director of the superconducting supercollider mm -hmm. until Congress canceled it. Mm -hmm. And then you had to get a job, so he's a professor <laughs> at Cornell. So we have them scattered at yeah. uh, various universities in physics, mostly in the academic field. Although right. we do have people in uh, medical physics and other areas. What makes our program competitive now? 
the science program competitive now? I think it's the quality of the faculty. Mm -hmm. you know, we have, uh, for a small liberal arts college that uh, you know, doesn't have the biggest and best building around, mm -hmm. so to speak, uh, we've turned out, as Victor said, some absolutely uh, super mm -hmm. scientists, mm -hmm. physicians, dentists, you know, that are all across the country. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you both for allowing me to capture your history at Iona and the history besides, uh, behind the Cornelius Science Building. Well, thank you very much. It's our pleasure. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.